Hi, Miss Newburn here. Um, today we're going to be learning about the soil food web and this will help us with our um, exploration out in the food forest. So let's get started. You're going to need to take notes, so you're going to need to have your science journal out. Um, you're going to set up Cornell notes with, on the left side, our focus questions. So you're going to need to write down what energy roles do organisms play in an ecosystem? How does energy move through an ecosystem? And how much energy is available at each level of an energy pyramid? So you're going to need to stop probably the video, take some time to set up your Cornell notes. Once again, on the right side, you'll write kind of vocabulary and other things that you learned or other things that maybe you know that would be helpful for you to understand these concepts. We also have a couple of root words that um, will kind of help us access the vocabulary. Once again, in your science journal, you're going to highlight these so that you know that we've studied them and you're responsible for them after this. So one mega is large, macro of great size, large in scope. So we've talked about that before, macronutrients, the NPK that plants need in larger quantities. Meso, middle, and you guys have learned about Mesopotamia in your language arts class. And micro, small, or in particular one millionth. And of course you've heard about microscopes before. So um, two other really kind of helpful words to know are flora and fauna. So flora deals with the plant life in a particular region, habitat, or geologic period. And fauna is the same, but that's the animal aspect. Um, so for example, when I lived in Fiji, I was really interested in learning about the flora of the tropical rainforest there. So in particular, we're going to be looking and learning about some of the fauna in the garden. So we have our megafauna, <laughs> unfortunately, gophers. Um, we have some macrofauna, um, slugs, earthworms, ants, our mesofauna mites, and then there's smaller things that you'd need a microscope to see, such as roundworms. And we will be looking at some of those under the um, special microscope equipment. Now, energy roles. So kind of the three main ones are producers. These are, they make their own food. Um, so for example, plants, algae, and some bacteria. Um, when you look at a food pyramid, such as the one on the bottom of the screen, this energy pyramid, the, you know, the, pl the plants in particular are going to make up this large part of it because everything else is, they're getting their energy, which was produced from sunlight, from that bottom, um, the bottom energy level. Consumers. So consumers are uh, organisms that eat other organisms. So for example, herbivores, um, also sometimes referred to as primary consumers, um, primary because they're eating the plants. Um, carnivores, which are meat eaters, are sometimes referred to as secondary consumers because they are eating the primary consumers. And then scavengers, they eat carcasses, you know, such as turkey vultures, and a carcass um, just means like a dead body. Um, and then we also have the decomposers. Those are things that break down the waste and dead organisms, for example, fungi and bacteria. Once again, you need to be stopping the notes, I'm sorry, stopping the video periodically and taking notes. So here's just a simple um, example of a food chain. So once again, you have your producers, your grass that's being eaten by a grasshopper, a primary consumer. That grasshopper is eaten by a snake. And then the snake is eaten by a hawk. So that's a tertiary consumer. Typically, because energy is lost every single time, it's about one-tenth or about 10% um, is what's able to be taken in in terms of the energy at each level. So it's a huge loss, 90% loss at each level. Most food chains can't really support anything above a fifth level um, consumer. And then you have the decomposers, the fungi, you know, that would eat the hawk when it dies and it would go back into um, supporting the grass being grown. 
So here's a picture of an energy pyramid. You saw it earlier on the slide on producers. So once again, you see that the producers have this huge area down on the bottom and the grasshoppers that eat them, you know, only get one tenth or 10% of the energy from that. So, you know, by the time, you know, it gets all the way up to the owl at the top level, this tertiary consumer, for every thousand, you know, uh, kilocalories of grass that were um, produced, the tertiary consumer is only getting one kilocal of that energy. So let's look at the so soil food web because that's what we're going to be particularly concerned with. Um, and here there's a new vocabulary word which is uh, trophic level and that's the position an organism occupies in the food chain. So we talked about already kind of um, the uh, plants that photosynthesize, those are on the first trophic level. Um, and then we'll get into some of these other more specific words like mutualist and pathogens later. So you can kind of see it's a pretty complex, so it's a little bit different than a food chain which is just one thing after the other. Um, but this shows all the interrelations um, in, you know, in the environment. And the thing that I really want to point out is diversity. So ecosystems are a lot healthier when there's a lot more diversity, and we're going to play that game um, to kind of just show the interconnectedness. So when you have a system um, where there's lots of interrelations, um, it's a much more complex and stable system. So for example, um, if there was some issue with the algae, well, the snail can still get food, but through the marsh grass. And so it kind of um, allows kind of alternative pathways for um, the different organisms to get their needs met. Whereas you can see here, if there was a problem with the marsh grass, you know, pretty much everything kind of collapses. So simple systems are unstable. In our modern agriculture system, we have gone to a very simple and hence unstable system. So we, so um, one of the reasons we're doing our food forest is to make a more complex and hence stable system. And once again, if you need more information, you can go to RebeccaNewburn.com and there will be links for additional resources. Have a lovely day.